So something I think is tricky that I want to talk about in this video is how you can make your co-pilot sound more human-like. Because we all understand that this is not an actual person and that generative AI, while it is really powerful, has a long way to go. But nonetheless, there are actionable things, that differences that you can make to your co-pilot so that it starts sounding more human-like right now. So if you are trying to figure this out, this is actually, this video is not going to be a very, hey, click this button, check this button. There will be a couple of, a little, a few of those things here in a second, excuse me. But I also just want to tell you, like, if you are building a co-pilot within Microsoft Copilot Studio, if your topics, which if you don't know what a topic is, that's okay. But if your topics have a ton of question nodes and send a message nodes, then it's going to naturally use less and less and less generative AI and make it sound more and more robotic. And so what do I mean by that? If it feels like your co-pilot is constantly repeating itself or, you know, give it you gave you already gave it information then it asks a question that you you already gave it so then you feel like you need to repeat yourself, then it's probably because you are setting up your topics incorrectly. Now, I wanna show you just a couple of things that may be negatively impacting your Copilot within Microsoft Copilot Studio. So here I just have a coffee Copilot that we use to say order a coffee and learn a little bit more about coffee. But I just wanna show you a couple of things that I would recommend you do. First, I would highly recommend you fill out at least the instructions if you have not. and little pro tip, you don't have to write these from scratch, you can actually use generative AI to write you good generative AI instructions. But nonetheless, something I want to talk about is is topics. And you'll see here are all of the topics that I have for this copilot and the majority of them are kind of pre built ones. And specifically, one I want to call out is this conversational boosting topic. Now, I have seen people where what they do is they go and they kind of update this conversational boosting topic. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I'm just saying, I want to tell you what this does. What this does is this is like a, almost like a fallback in when it doesn't, when the copilot doesn't understand what you want it to do. Say you have a topic to do A, a topic to do B, and a topic to do C, and you say, hey, I want to do D. It's going to kind of utilize the conversational boosting to figure out what it is that you are wanting. And if it if it can't figure it out after using that, then it goes to the fallback topic, which is a different one here, not necessarily what we're talking about here. So that is what that conversational boosting topic is. So understanding that that how that should be set up and setting that up correctly. Another thing I want to talk about is here is my order a coffee topic. And you will notice that this is very simple and this flow doesn't actually technically do anything. But nonetheless, you know, I'm gathering a coffee order, like the type of coffee they want, the size of the coffee they want, and the person's name. Now, if you have any experience with Copilot or building Copilots within Copilot Studio, you might be wondering, how, how am I gathering this sort of information? I, I, I don't have any question notes, like where, where am I getting that? So that is kind of the main premise, public service announcement that I wanted to make uh, in this video is the more question nodes and send message nodes that you have, the more structure your copilot is going to have. And that means that it could tend to repeat itself. And there are settings that you can say skip question, you know, if necessary, whatever. But I find that those don't actually work as well as we think. And so for example, if I were to ask a question and say, hey, what sort of coffee do you like? You know, and then the next question, like I have these questions built out. And then the next question is, um, what size coffee do you like? And then the next question is, what is your name? If I kind of hard code those questions into the canvas here, then what if my first message, it says, hey, what sort of coffee would you like? And I say, I'd like a small black coffee. My name is Griffin. Like if I gave that question, you know, I responded with all three, it's going to then go to the next question and say, what size coffee do you want? Right? That doesn't sound very human. Like that's not how it would be like if I was interacting with a person. And so how do we get around that? Well, another tip that I wanted to show is 
you can actually set up, so these are these are variables, um, not talking about variables in detail as a part of this video, but, no, no, excuse me. We have these things called topic inputs. And so if I'm on my order a coffee topic, I'm gonna go to details. And here you will see there are inputs. And here is where I'm defining this coffee order variable, this coffee size variable, and this order name variable. And this is also where I'm defining the question that they will ask, or that Copilot will ask. So if I click on this additional settings, well for one, it says, hey, what the coffee type variable is, is the type of coffee someone would like to purchase or order. And the question is, what sort of coffee would you like? Same if I go down here, maybe this one's a little bit more tangible for you. If I go to coffee size, the amount of coffee that person may want to order. The options can be small, medium, or large. And then the, the setting is, or the question is, what size coffee would you like? And so this way, when you utilize topic inputs, you're actually leaning on generative AI to diagnose that message and figure out and set the variables accordingly. So you can get things off the canvas as you need. I also just wanna say kind of one, one final tip and I will actually link the video to this after this one, so you can go directly to that, is finding ways, if, if you need to ask questions. Um, like, there are several scenarios where that is unavoidable, and scenarios where I would highly, highly recommend it. So this is not a don't add question nodes video. But say there are scenarios where you need to ask questions. I would highly, highly recommend you utilize quick replies as much as possible. The reason is, is because that way you can kind of standardize how people are responding. Now, what are quick replies? Quick replies are kind of in this message over here. Actually, let me show you. It's actually still set up. So if I were to say, I just had a coffee and would like to review. I have a co-pilot review topic set up. These here are quick replies, just so you can you know, tangibly see what I'm talking about. And selecting one of these, you know, it, it, it standardizes my response to this. And so setting up things like quick replies, setting up things like synonyms, defining and adding descriptions wherever you can within your Copilot are going to be so, so huge. Now, if you feel like what I've said has not helped you in your scenario, then be sure to follow the first link in the description down below to get in direct contact with me. I am super passionate about learning more about Copilot Studio, and I wanna learn things, I wanna help you learn things. If you have questions or feel like you need coaching or need specific help in your scenario and can't find something online, get in contact within my email or send me an email with that first link down in the description down below and there you are. I wanna know if if there are things that you have done to make your co-pilot sound more realistic, then I want you to let me know what you have done down in the, the comments down below and just let me know what you kind of do to, again, make co-pilot sound more human-like and less like a robot, especially if this is kind of customer facing or, you know, End, end user facing isn't, you know, maybe internal co-pilot or anything like that, but something where, you know, it's a representation of a company or a brand. You want it to sound real and authentic and like a person. And so any of those tips, be sure to drop them down in the comments down below so that anybody else watching this video can check those out. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. My name is Griffin Lickfelt. Oh, I almost, I almost forgot. If you want to know how to check out the how to set up multiple choice questions and quick replies, be sure to check out this video here. Okay, cool, now the spiel. My name is Griffin Lickfelt, the host. If you wanna come and hang out with me a little bit more, be sure to check out the Power Talks podcast on this channel, new episode every Wednesday. I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.